I believe that when we begin to have faith in what is within ourselves, something begins to happen, particularly on a spiritual basis. When we're inspired by somebody and we make the connection that I'm not exactly the same as them, but still what's inspiring me is within me. And when we have faith that even though that seems like a small thing at first, but the Bible calls it a still small voice. And that's how it seems to us. It's almost nothing. It's actually something profound. And it is our, it is our faith in the profound nature of what we have touched inside ourselves may be inspired by another person. It is that which allows that small but profound thing to grow, to have resonance. It's not just some quotation from the Bible or from some other person or an idea from somebody else. We begin to feel the creative vibration within ourselves moving through and give credence to it and let it be small. I think that's one thing that happens from people. Like, what do I have to say? It's such a small little thing. And compared to this person or that person, oh, who, who, who cares about that? When you learn that the simplicity of something that is true, which you bring to the world, has power. It has power for you. And if somebody else can see it and resonate it with it, and then find that truth in themselves, that's a magnificent thing. This is a, a critical issue in all kinds of spiritual paths all over the world. The world doesn't let it itself be changed by extraordinary people because they end up being idolized. It's a very immature way to respond to an extraordinary person is to idolize them. And it could be the beginning of something to idolize that person. But in a spiritual context, that only goes so far. I'll talk about the person I'm aware of who gets idolized in our culture, realizing that the same thing goes on in other cultures and other spiritual traditions, and it's Jesus Christ. Put up on a pedestal, put apart, look at him. Not me. It's not me. It's it's him. Bumper sticker says, um, "You know, Jesus loves you." It's like, I'm a poor, miserable, resentful person, but Jesus loves you. <laughs> that to me is always like the the subscript. <laughs> and in some way, people make claims that that's what Jesus taught, which wasn't at all what he taught. It wasn't what he taught. I'll give you a, a couple of quotations. So, um, that where I am, there may ye be also. Very simple statement, but unmistakable what he was saying. Where, where I am, you may be also. He also said, um, well, simply love one another as I have loved you. Here is this being of this profound love. Like it, it, I don't know how you could read the gospels, gospels without feeling this incredible love of this man. Like no matter what happened, he couldn't stop loving. Oh my goodness. And he very simply said, um, love one another as I have loved you. Like this is, you're very capable of this. 
he also said um, said this. He said, "I am the vine; you are the branches." Now you think might think that it's a lesser position to be a branch rather than the vine, but when I think of vines, the branch is part of the vine, is it not? It's not like there's a vine and then there's a branch over here that has that's not part of the vine. The branch is the vine. He was saying that he was bringing something central. I think that's, you could read it that way, that I'm the trunk of the vine. The vine's got to have a trunk. Like I am bringing the core of something, but you're a part of that. We are all a part of that. 